Dominant strategies are considered as better than other strategies, thus reporting more utility to the player without considering what the other player might do. Let's see how these work using the game known as the Prisoner's Dilemma. If player 1 chooses to confess, he can either get negative 8 or 0, depending on what the other player does. By adding both values, we get the expected value here, negative 8. If player 1 chooses to lie, he can get either negative 10 or negative 1, depending on what the other player does, being the expected value, negative 11. Confess is therefore the dominant strategy since it has a higher expected value than strategy lie. Since the payoffs are the same for both players, we know that for player 2, confess will also be the dominant strategy. Confess confess is the dominant strategy equilibrium in this game, since it is the set of strategies that maximizes each prisoner's utility. Since any dominant strategy equilibrium is always a Nash equilibrium, confess confess is also a Nash equilibrium. A Nash equilibrium is defined as the best decision a player can make, taking into account the other player's decision. Therefore, to get to the Nash equilibrium, we can also use another approach, known as elimination of dominated strategies. Let's see how this works. Prisoner 1 has to build a belief about what choice Prisoner 2 is going to make in order to choose the best strategy. It can be easily seen that Prisoner 2 will choose to confess since he will be better off. Lie is therefore the dominated strategy, which we eliminate. Since prisoner 2 is going to confess, player 1 must confess too, since he will be better off. Proceeding inversely, we analyze the beliefs of prisoner 2 about prisoner 1's strategies. This gets us to the same point. The rational thing to do for prisoner 2 is to confess. As said before, confess confess is the Nash equilibrium. This example of elimination of dominated strategies was easy to solve, since both players had a dominant strategy. However, in some games, such as the Battle of the Bismarck Sea, not all players have a strictly dominant strategy. In this game, Kenny has no strictly dominant strategy, since the sum of the payoffs of the first strategy, 2 plus 2, equals the sum of the second strategy, 1 plus 3. However, the Japanese do have a weakly dominating strategy which is to go north, since the sum of the payoffs is strictly better. Since only one of them has a dominant strategy, there is no dominant strategy equilibrium. We must then proceed by eliminating dominated strategies. As we've already mentioned, for the Japanese strategy go north, weakly dominate strategy go south. Therefore, we eliminate the strategy go south for the Japanese, since it's dominated by strategy go north. Now that we only consider the Japanese going north, Kenny's strategy go north is strictly dominant over strategy go south, which will be eliminated. Therefore, north north is the weak dominance equilibrium. As we've seen, the easiest approach looking for strictly dominant strategies does not always work, which makes necessary eliminating dominated strategies. Depending on which game we need to analyze, we'll have to proceed using a different approach.